Okay, so we're going to be doing a pod review today on that plant right there, and that is called the Wild Japanese Pepper Tubo Capsaicin Anomalum. It's also referred to as Capsaicin Anomalum because that's what it was originally for many years, and then they recently declassified it, and now it's called Tubo Capsaicin Anomalum. So it's in the Tubo Capsaicin family, which I don't know of any other Tubo Capsaicins out there, but that's what it is. So... Anyway, as you can see, we got quite a few berries on this thing, and they're all starting to come into ripening now. And it's the end of the year. It took all year for these berries to ripen. Pretty much these berries sat on here for maybe close to two months before they're starting to turn red now. So why don't we pick one of these, like that one right there. Try to get you in the right light almost rotten they actually got a dent in it from falling on the floor i just dropped it so i had to pick it up let me try to get you in good better lighting that is the tubo capsaicin anomalum berry so it said that it's not hot so there shouldn't be any heat on this thing at all so let's turn you around and give it a go all right, guys, here we are. We're doing another pod review today, and today it's going to be on the Tubo Capsaicin Anomalum. A lot of people have been waiting for me to do a pod review on this, and uh, here's the moment of truth for the wild Japanese pepper. Now, this was classified for many years as Capsaicin Anomalum. For many years, it was classified as that, and just until recent years, they just renamed it to a Tubo Capsaicin Anomalum. Something to do with the chromosomes is slightly different, and it's not truly a cap, but in my, in my opinion, this is a pepper as far as I'm concerned. So it's still always dear to my heart as a capsaicin anomalum. But here it is, and let's get you in some good light. You can see what it looks like. It's got a very distinctive cap on the top. It's almost like a little, like a cup upside down holding it it's really strange in a lot of ways but there it is without any further ado let's give it a go well i can tell you it's one of the strangest tasting peppers i've ever tasted was it had i don't know how to say this it's extremely difficult to describe this one had a very pungent taste the plant has a very pungent smell the plant has a very distinctive pungent type of smell excuse me if i'm spitting i this thing's got my mouth watering here the plant has a very specific smell it has a it, it smells like a certain weed that grows wild around here it has that same kind of a smell i can't f figure out what weed that is offhand but there is a weed that smells just like that that smell transcends into the pepper. You get that pungent kind of a taste, and it's kind of like a very, not tangy, but very tarty type of a flavor. Very strong in essence, that tarty part is almost like eating, um, if you've ever eaten raw licorice root, have, is, I don't know if anybody else has done that, I might be the only person who, who's actually eaten raw licorice root. Um, yeah, I've eaten raw licorice root, and it has a certain kind of uh, intensity to it. It's very similar to fennel. Fennel kind of does that same thing. If you eat fennel root or if you eat fennel seed, it has like an intensity to it. It's very similar, that, that tangy or tarty part of it, very strong like that. It has a very strong part of it, dominating the entire flavor sensation. The other thing about it is it was sweet at the same time. So it was like a very strong, tarty type of flavor that had a very uh, sweet flavor next to it. It didn't taste anything like a berry per se, like, you know, eating a sweet berry or anything. It didn't taste like that at all. The, flav the flavor of the thing was completely dominated by this tarty effect. And it's very resinous it has like this i'm trying to give you an idea of the the intensity of it it was very intense it was almost off-putting to be honest with you 
But, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, you could eat them here and there. I guess you can develop your palate a little bit so you can get used to that and kind of learn how to eat them. But it's not the most tastiest thing in the world, but it is fun to grow. I mean, it's a very rare type of plant. I am going to bring that plant in for the winter, and uh, I'm going to prune it way down. I'm just going to keep the base alive throughout the winter, and then we're going to plant this out in the yard and see how big this thing can really get, because that's what I really want to see. I just needed to proof it, make sure everything matches up. Now, I have seen other images of this plant, and I have seen some of the flowers were different than my flowers. So there may be several species that probably look exactly the same, except they got like different flowers, might have different fruit. This particular species uh, is the way I describe the flavor and everything. The others, I don't know. There might, I don't really know anything about it. There's really no, no information on the internet about the tubo capsaicin anomalum. There's really nothing out there, except for a few maybe videos and some articles that you could read, but that's really it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know you were probably expecting it to be like, oh, it was sweet. It was great. That's what it is, guys. That thing was tardy. Ain't exactly looking forward to munching on another one right now because my palate is kind of soured. And I don't necessarily want to eat those things again, but they're fun. It's a fun plant to grow. It is a capsaicin, so if you are a species collector, I definitely recommend you grow it for yourself and save the seed and so on and so on. So that might be something you want to consider. Anyway, that's our pod review for the wild Japanese pepper tubo capsaicin anomalum. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.